What's up everybody, it's Victon, here with my first in-game build guide of the league, the Carrion Golem Elementalist. As you could tell from the gameplay showcase, the build did turn out to be just fine for doing in-game bosses, and so far I've been able to knock out Shaper, Uber Elder, my first Cyrus, several of the in-game Maven invitations like the Guardians and the Breach Lords, and of course general mapping and tier 16 maps. All of that is not to say that we haven't had a few struggles and learning moments along the way. The nerf to carrying golems wasn't enough to knock this build out by any means, but once you get to tier 16 maps and above, it does feel a bit noticeable. We're still incredibly tanky and have about 8 million DPS, so currently more than enough for pretty much all the content that most people will be doing. I wouldn't say this is the min-maxed version of the build, since I'm missing awakened gems, better cluster jewels, a few better items in general, so still a few more million DPS and about 500 or so life to come. But I do believe at this point I feel very confident bringing you guys a solid in-game version of the build. I had to change up a few different things to combat the crazy ultimatums that absolutely wreck minions in general, and for the most part our minions now don't ever die so that is pretty nice, and as far as personal tankiness, I basically never die either. In fact, the first death that I had in quite a while was this morning on Maven, but even then I was able to take her out pretty easily, and it was probably just my personal error standing in something that I probably shouldn't have. Overall, I'd certainly say this build was a success, and I'm hoping to present you guys with a solid build that you can work towards, and that's going to take you all the way to and through the in-game content. Before we dive into the guide, if you guys end up enjoying this, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for a ton more Path of Exile content just like this. I also have linked below my Twitch channel where you can come in and ask as many questions as you want. I honestly love helping you guys out with your builds, so hit that follow button over there if you're interested. Also, if you're interested in supporting the channel, I have a link to my Patreon below, which gets you access to my community Discord, where I do personal build reviews all the time, and we're in there just chilling, having a good time, talking about PoE and builds all day, every day. There's also a new way to support the channel thanks to GGG since they set up the Path of Exile Nexus store, which is pretty cool. Basically, you can support me by purchasing cosmetic armor sets for PoE, and I get a small cut of the proceeds, which, by the way, all goes directly back into this channel to help improve the content and grow our community. So if you're interested in purchasing an armor set in PoE, definitely check out that link posted below, and you can get the added bonus of supporting the channel, all while getting that fancy new armor set that you've been wanting. And even if you guys aren't able to, honestly, no worries at all. I appreciate every one of you for just watching this guide and being a part of our awesome Path of Exile community. Anyways, enough of that, let's get back into the build guide, and we're going to be doing first here is of course going into Path of Building. After that, we're going to be going over the gym links, and then we're going to talk about our gear choices and finish up with my final thoughts on the build so far. So without further ado, let's hop into Path of Building. Alright, so here we are, and first thing is first, if you're new to Path of Building, make sure you download this free app at the link in the description, and if you already have it, make sure you're running the Community Fork version of the app since it is the most up-to-date version. You'll want to copy the POB pastebin link I have in the description of this video, come up to Import Export Build in the top left here, and then click Import from Pastebin. We're going to paste the text in here, and then hit Import, and you are good to go. Now, the first thing I want to point out is I have included the leveling paths, which you can access by clicking down here, and you can go through each of these as if you're leveling up your character to see exactly where you should put in your points and in what order. I've gone back and changed a few things with lessons learned from leveling up the build and playing in these crazy ultimatums, so it'll be slightly different than that League Starter version, but for the most part, it's the same concept. You can also check out the skills tab for the ideal gym link setup. Same with our gear setup, there is a tab here for you guys to take a look at what the ideal in-game items should look like so you can work towards them over time. In the notes section, I have a bit of a leveling up notes if you're interested in that as well. As far as the tree itself, we won't spend too much time here, this being an in-game version of the build, and if you've gotten to this point, you most likely have an idea of the basics of this build. That being said, here are at least some highlights. We're of course going to get as much life as possible since we don't end up with too much, which don't worry isn't a big deal since we have many layers of defense. We also get a lot of minion damage nodes, basically every one that we can, and then focus on getting as many jewel sockets as possible. These jewel sockets will mainly be used for our primordial jewels, that being primordial might, which we have one of, primordial harmony, which we have three of, and primordial eminence, which we have four of, and then of course our anima stone, which is going to give us that plus two to max golems, which is a huge DPS and survivability increase. Also, the new addition to our jewel sockets is a timeless jewel, which is going to be a sacrifice in the name of Zababqua. That's going to give us the Divine Flesh Keystone. This is a huge part of our defense. 
It along with a small cluster jewel we're going to go over shortly gets us up to 83% max chaos resistance and 50% of elemental damage we take first goes through our chaos resistance. So very strong for both chaos and elemental damage. As far as cluster jewels, we do go with two large eight passive clusters with renewal and rotten claws for a bunch of damage and also survivability for your minions. For our mediums, we have three medium four passive clusters, all of which have renewal, two having dread march as the second passive, and the third having feasting fiends as that passive for some extra damage leech for your minions. And lastly, we do have a small chaos resistance three passive cluster with born of chaos as the important node there. That'll get you up to the 83% Chaos Resistance alongside Divine Flesh. Moving on to our Ascendancy Points. We're first going to grab Liege of the Primordial for plus one to max Golems, and some Golem buff effect, and a huge quality of life bonus of having your Golems be resummoned if they die. Next, we're going to get Elemancer for another max Golem, bringing us to a total of six. We're going to opt for four Carrion Golems, one Stone Golem for high life regen per second, and also one Chaos Golem to help us reach a total of 90% physical damage mitigation. We also get some Golem buff effect and 100% ailment immunity, which is amazing, so no more being frozen, shocked, or ignited. After that, we're going to pick up Bastion of Elements for a little over 2,000 elemental damage shield. This was nerfed a little bit this patch, but is still a fantastic option. That comboed with 90% physical damage mitigation and Divine Flesh with 83% chaos resistance were incredibly tanky, even at only 4.5k life. For our last points, we pick up Shaper of Storms to be able to shock with our Flame Dash. Once we get this node, we do end up dropping our Skittermots and opt for Flesh and Stone instead. Then Flame Dash over bosses for 2 seconds of shock with 15% more damage. Perfect, so that was our tree and ascendancy points, so let's go ahead and move on to our gem links. Our main skill is of course Carrion Golems, and from there we get in order of importance, Awakened Melee Physical Damage, Divergent Multi-Strike, Awakened Brutality, Awakened Minion Damage, and lastly Impale. For Awakened Gems, the first one you should be buying is Awakened Melee Physical Damage for 10% chance to intimidate on hit, which is going to be a 10% more damage multiplier. And until we get Awakened Multi-Strike, which is of course expensive, just pick up a Divergent Multi-Strike and you'll be just fine. For our helmet, we have Ray Zombie, Ray Spectre, Anime Guardian, and Life Tap. And make sure that your Ray Zombie, Ray Spectre, and Anime Guardian are all level 21 for as much life on them as possible. For our Spectres, we have two Carnage Chieftains and one Host Chieftain for Frenzy Charges and Power Charges. And for our Anime Guardian, we have a Kingmaker for the weapon, Mask of the Stitched Demon for the helmet, which is incredibly important, Windscreen Boots for the plus one to maximum curses, a pair of gloves with vulnerability on hit, and a Bonnie Armor with nearby enemies are blinded, and also the Benchcraft X% of life as extra maximum energy shield, which is needed to work with the Mask of the Stitch Demon to basically make your enemy Guardian immortal. We do not want this guy to die, so this is the setup that you need to make that happen. For our next 4 link, we have Chaos Golem, Stone Golem, Feeding Frenzy, and Maim for a bunch of extra damage for our Carrion Golems. For our last 4 link, we have Convocation, Flame Dash, Vol Molten Shell, regular Molten Shell, which should be on your left click, so it auto casts as you walk, and lastly, a level 1 Desecrate, a low level 1 to make sure that we keep our mana cost down, since we don't have that much mana. For our first weapon, we have a level 3 Immortal Call, and a level 1 cast when damage taken, and then unlinked to those, we have a Divergent Flesh Offering for extra attack speed. In our second weapon, we have Divergent Dread Banner, Awakened Generosity, and Divergent Pride. For our first unset ring, we have Assassin's Mark to help with boss damage, and you can put in Punishment if you're mapping as well, that works just fine. For our second unset ring, we have Flesh and Stone in Blood Stance. And that's it for our gym links, so let's go ahead and move on over to our gear choices. For our two weapons, we do opt for two Cold Iron Point Daggers. These daggers are best in slot until you're min-maxed plus two gym wands with temple mod minion damage, but we're going to save that wand for the min-maxed version of the build guide, but if you are interested, I do have a crafting guide on that on my channel. Until then, the cold iron point daggers will work just fine, and they're actually not that expensive. For our helmet, we go with an elder base, and using bound fossils, we craft on these plus two to three level of socketed minion gems, and plus 18 to 20 minion life, along with hopefully some life and resistances. For our body armor, we go with the mega armor base Brass Dome. 
This thing is massive armor and also comes with you can't be crit, so really strong defenses. It's a great chest and is relatively cheap this league compared to the last few leagues. For our gloves, we get breath stealers for those juicy spore pods. These things are like mini headhunter buffs for your minions. They are absolutely insane for doing ultimatums, since there's so many rare monsters you end up with a zillion little pods on the ground which really helps damage and survivability. It's also a great bonus that we're going to be able to get a second anoint on those gloves, and for that we're going to be using a Dominal Army for extra minion defenses. Speaking on ultimatums, those things are insane for minions for some reason and it kills them non-stop, so we had to invest a little bit extra in defenses for our minions or they're just going to die, which feels pretty bad. If you don't have Breath Stealers, I'd suggest Indomitable Army being your main anoint instead of Ravenous Horde. Not sure about how the market will treat the prices of these Breath Stealers after this video comes out, so another option is just a rare pair with life, resistances, and crafted 20% minion damage. For our boots, we simply go with a pair that has high move speed, life, high elemental resistances, and definitely some chaos resistance as well. For our amulet, same thing, just high life and resistances, but also as much dexterity as you can, or you're going to have to get some on your unset rings, which is going to make them a bit pricey. The min-max upgrade for there would be the plus one to spell gems and plus one to intelligence skill gems with life and resistances, but honestly, I'm not sure how doable that's going to be anymore with the harvest now being poop. For now, just stick with the amulet I have and you'll be just fine. For our two unset rings, we just get life resistances and some chaos resistance as well if we need it. And we're going to try and leave an open suffix so you can benchcraft plus one to minimum endurance charges. For our belt, we have two options here that we can go with. The expensive option is Torrent's Reclamation, which is going to get you about another 500 or so KDPS. Or we can stick with the two chaos darkness and throne belt and then have some nice minion jewels with life minion damage and minion physical damage. These net you more life and only a bit less DPS than the 9 Exalt Torrents Reclamation, so I'd stick with these for now. For our flasks, you'll want Rumi's Concoction for armor and some block chance, Taste of Hate for some cold damage reduction, a Quicksilver Flask of Warding since you're a bit slow to run around with the Brass Dome on, a Basalt Flask of Staunching for the bleed removal, and a Forbidden Taste for an instant full life heal flask. Make sure you get one with recover full life on use. And that's it for our gems, so that brings us to the conclusion of the guide and my final thoughts. Overall this build was an absolute breeze as a league starter. Very low investment to get up to the red tier maps and start farming those in game bosses and maps for some solid early league currency. I will admit though that once I got up into red tier maps I could definitely tell the nerf. The damage was noticeably lower and even more so on bosses like Shaper and Uber Elder and Maven. The good news though is you can still kill those bosses with these, it just takes about 20% longer which really isn't that huge of a deal. Your survivability is still fantastic with how many layers of defense we have and with just over 9 million DPS that is more than enough for all content in the game. I also was a bit disappointed with how insane ultimatums are in high red tier maps for minions. I think it's the corrupting blood that's killing them from what I've heard since it got changed this leak. Not really sure but what I do know is I had to change up the build to get more minion survivability than I ever have had in any past leak. We did end up fixing the problem and our dudes don't die anymore, but like I said we had to trade off some life and DPS for it, which just is what it is, what can you do? Long story short, definitely a great league starter that led into a fantastic boss killer, but sadly the damage is a bit less than it has been. But hey, we were kind of OP on the last few leagues, so the nerf was warranted and just in my opinion. And that about wraps it up guys. If you made it this far, you are a wonderful human being and I hope you got something out of this guide that you can use on your character. If you enjoyed this guide, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Tons of more ultimatum content coming very soon, so hit that notification bell as well, and I will see you guys in the next one.